Well, special thanks to Nahum for ministering the word to us last Sunday and, and for introducing uh, some of the things we're going to talk about this morning. You're welcome to open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4, and we'll be looking at this, uh, this same paragraph in the middle of the chapter. Ephesians 4, and I'll just read beginning at verse 17. So this I say and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. And they, having become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality, for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. But you did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed you have heard Him and have been taught in Him, just as truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. Amen. The overall theme of these verses is a call to holiness. It's a, it's a call to Christians to pursue sanctification, to become more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> The Ephesians are first reminded in verses 17 through 19 of how bad they used to be back when they were lost in their sins. The futility of their mind, darkened in their understanding, excluded from God's light because of ignorance within them, because of the hardness of their heart. They were callous. They were given to sensuality, to every kind of impurity with Greediness. It's a bad picture. But things change, do not they? Things change. You get to the next verse, verse 20, and it begins with the word but. But, what happened? But, Christ came. Christ came on the scene. But, he says, you have not so learned Christ. Something fundamental had happened. And then in verse 21, he expands on that thought of what's involved in learning Christ, hearing Him, being taught in Him, knowing that truth is in Jesus. And when that happens, then, then there are big changes in a person's life. In the next verses 22 to 24 about, about these changes of how it's so dramatic that it's, it's like your old self has been taken off and you put on a whole new self now as... A believer. Well, I originally thought I could cover all these all these verses in uh, in one message, uh, but but this thing of learning Christ, learning Christ in verses twenty and twenty one, just just came alive to me this week in such a way that I just I just want to talk about that today. Uh, so verse twenty, but you did not learn Christ in this way, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him just as truth is in Jesus. There are four phrases uh, in these two verses. Learn Christ, heard Him, taught in Him, truth is in Jesus. There are four simple phrases. Do you know what they mean? Do you really know what they mean? Um, you might think you know, but I think this truth goes deeper than, than what we think as we read across the top of the words. There's some profound stuff here. And, and, and so in order to try to bring out the, the teaching clearly, I, I want to break it down into five observations, five statements uh, that we can get from these two verses. The first, the first one is is simply this, that salvation involves a learning process. Salvation involves a learning process. Uh, when, when Paul describes the Ephesians being saved, he describes it with these words, you learned Christ. You learned Christ. You learned something. 
In other words, becoming a Christian involves some learning. It involves getting some knowledge, getting some information, some truth. It, it is not enough to say, well, I felt certain feelings or I had this, this kind of mysterious spiritual experience or I just, you know, felt real happy or something and say, that's my testimony. No, <laughs> I, I hope you did feel a lot of great feelings when you got saved, but that's not your testimony. That's, that's, Christianity is not just that you felt a feeling or had an experience. There's content to it. There's something you learn. There is facts. There is truth that came home to you that you laid hold of. Somebody brought you the gospel. Somehow you heard truth about the Lord Jesus and you embraced that truth with arms of faith at some point and... And, and, and these facts about, about God, about, about Christ, about salvation, about heaven and hell and, 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 and holiness and sin and eternity and, and the cross and the resurrection. You learn some things when you got saved. You, you learn some new stuff. You embraced it. You entrusted your soul to that Christ whom you had learned about. The Lord Jesus said in John 5, He said, He who hears My Word and believes Him who sent Me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, is passed out of death into life. He says, you, did you catch that? He says, He who hears My Word and believes Him who sent Me. Uh, there's a verse in 1 Timothy 2, verse 4 that says, a familiar verse that says, God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. People that are saved are also people who have come to the knowledge of the truth. They have learned something. They've laid hold of truth. Uh, Acts 16 tells the story of, of how a woman named Lydia got saved. It's a wonderful story that, that there's these ladies at this riverside prayer meeting and, and one day the Apostle Paul shows up at their prayer meeting and starts telling them the Gospel of Christ. And it says that, that, that Lydia was listening and the Lord opened her heart to respond to the things spoken by Paul. So she heard it. She heard stuff she'd never heard before about Jesus, probably. She heard it. She received it. She believed it. And she responded to the Word. And she was saved that day. Um, that's what happened. She began to learn Christ. She became convinced that this Jesus that Paul spoke of, He, was, he is the greatest person imaginable. That He is a Savior for sinners that he is worthy of me surrendering everything in my life to him and serving him with all that I have for, from, from now on. Lydia began to learn Christ that day, but she didn't know everything, did she? She didn't know everything about Jesus that day. Her understanding of, of, of Christ that day was probably fairly small. Her theology was probably fairly confused still that day. Um, but it was the beginning, you see, the beginning of a lifetime of learning Christ. When you're saved, you begin to learn Christ, but you go on learning Him better and better. Well, it's the same way with these new Christians that are being baptized next week. They already, they already have learned Christ. They know a lot of Gospel truth. There was a lot of truth in these testimonies today. And... And so they understand that, that Jesus, Jesus died for their sins and rose again in victory on their behalf. They understand many uh, gospel realities. They've learned Christ, but they're going to go on learning Christ from, from this day forward for the rest of their lives on earth and for all eternity. They're going to keep on learning Christ. Christ and what a grand adventure this is. What an adventure it is to be the people who get to learn Christ for forever. Um, and, you know, at first, at first when you're saved, it's like you're it's like it's all brand new information, right? It's like it's like every time you open your Bible as a new Christian, it's like there's just new stuff in here. There's all these these things, these Bible verses you didn't even know were in there. 
And so you're finding these new things, like you're walking around, there's just treasures you're picking up, and you're wanting to grab onto these Bible verses and say, wow, I want to remember that verse forever. I want to write it down somewhere and, 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 and grab onto it. Or, or maybe you have a lot of questions every time you open your Bible. You've got a dozen new questions. What does all this stuff mean? And you're trying to figure it all out. That's how it is at first, but over time, it seems like you have fewer new questions and and the process of, of learning Christ shifts a little bit from, from hearing stuff brand new for the first time until, until it's more like you're, you're learning how to apply and experience and live out the things you already kind of know. The things you're already kind of familiar with. Bible verses that you've, you've actually known for years suddenly become alive to you and, and become a part of your life and you learn how to actually walk in the light of that scripture that that's, was familiar for some time. So, you know, I've been a Christian now for about 37 years and I am still learning Christ. I'm still learning Christ. And, and in, I mean, just this year, I have learned Christ in some precious ways. It's, it's been the best part of the year, probably. I'd have to say, is ways that, I, that Christ has become more real to me in my heart as a believer now. It's not things that I'd never heard before, but it's things that, that have become much more real in my experience of Christ. That's the first thought. That salvation involves a learning process. We begin to learn Christ when we're saved and we go on learning Christ ever after. Second thing, to see in these verses is that that process is centered on Christ himself. It is learning Christ. It is learning Christ. It, it, it does not say learning about Christ. I hope your translation does not say that. <laughs> yes, that is not, that's not what's there in the Greek. It says simply learning Christ. Christ. And if you go on to verse 21, it does not say you've heard about Christ or you've been taught about Christ. Uh, that's a very important distinction, see? Because, because all of us, all of us know a lot of facts about Christ. If you're, if you're raised, in, raised in, in church, raised in a Christian family, like, like the two testimonies he's, we heard today, you know lots of facts. You've got lots of true information about Christ. But there's a massive difference between knowing a pile of facts about Jesus and actually learning Christ for yourself. Do those, do those facts lead you to the person? Do they lead you to a relationship with the Lord Himself? That's the crucial thing. That's what this is about. You know, somebody could, could memorize the whole New Testament and still go to hell. Right? It's just having the knowledge is not enough. You have to know Him. You have to, you have to learn Christ Himself to be, to be saved. Uh, some, of you, some of you children listening now and others, others that will, will hear this, you're, you, you want to be saved. You want to be saved in, in, in some way, but, but you're stuck. You're stuck. You're not, you're not actually getting saved. And, and, and you're, you know, you're, the problem is, the problem is, guys, that you're, you're thinking about the whole thing wrong. You're thinking about it all wrong. You're approaching it all wrong. And, and, and this verse can really, really help you. I, I suspect you're thinking about becoming a Christian as though it's this giant puzzle that you're trying to figure out, you're trying to solve. You're trying to figure out what is the right combination of all the little things I need to do in order to get myself saved. What, what, what things do I need to be believing? What things, thoughts do I need to be thinking? What feelings do I need to be feeling? What, what words do I need to say? What, what, what things do I need to ask? What, what prayers do I need to pray? And, and you're thinking, if I can just do all the right stuff, if I can just assemble all this stuff, if I can do the performance just right, then God will save me. And it will work. I say don't worry about any of that. I say you're, you're focusing on exactly the wrong thing. You're focusing on yourself. <laughs> what does this verse say? Learn Christ. Amen. Learn Christ. Um, focus all your attention, all your desires, all your faith, all your thoughts in one place. In the person 
of the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Look to Him and be saved. Learn Him, the person of Jesus. Remember, remember all that He has already done to save sinners. Remember all the ways He's already proven Himself and His faithfulness and His love. Remember His promises to save sinners that come to Him. He said these things. Look to Him as the one who's promised. And think of Him now. Think of Him now in heaven. How He's gladly receiving sinners and saving them and rejoicing in them. I'm, Taylor shared it last Sunday of, of how he's, Jesus is like a shepherd seeking the lost sheep and bringing them home and rejoicing over Him. That's Jesus. Focus on Him, His love, His compassion, His forgiveness, His grace. Think of how the Lord Jesus deserves your whole life and your worship and your obedience forever and ever. He deserves it. It's not like you're giving Him some extra thing. You know, like you're, you're, really, you're really being nice to Jesus when you become a Christian. No, He is worthy. He is worthy of our lives and our love and our affection and our service forever and ever. And, and what, a, what a great privilege it is to be, be able to follow Jesus and know Jesus and walk with Jesus and, and to, to say Jesus is my King. Jesus is my Lord, the one that I serve and to keep following Him all the way to heaven. If you will learn Christ, if you will learn Christ, dear friends, you will be saved. <laughs> and you'll be saved fast because, because when you focus on the Lord Jesus, that's when your faith grows. It's by looking to Him it's, it's, it's by seeing how wonderful He is. When you, when you put all the focus on yourself and your experience, you're just going to get tangled in knots. You're just going to get confused. But, but when you look to Him and see that He is a Savior, when you see that He's the one that's made all these promises and He's the one that desires to save, that's, that's when your faith explodes. Three weeks ago, I preached about how about this kind of this same thought about Christ being ready and eager to save anybody uh, that comes to Him and repentance and faith and and I and I said I said hey if you guys don't get saved today it's not going to be Jesus' fault and 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 you know Sherman here I mean I think he heard that and he just he just believed it and and he went to Christ that day and Christ saved him just like I said just like Jesus said he would do. And, and then, then German said last week, you know, it's all so simple. It's all so simple. Why didn't I get saved four years ago? Right? You heard him say that. And, and that's how it wasn't any big puzzle. There wasn't any dark mystery, some magic combination to figure out. It was just go to Christ and believe what he says. Take him in his word and you'll be saved. Just learn Christ. In other words, that He will save you. I mean, the, the verse I, I know I quoted three weeks ago was from Matthew 11 where Jesus says, Come to Me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take My yoke upon you and learn from Me. There's our word. Learn from Me. Learn Christ. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your soul. So, Christ is at the center of things when you get saved, but Christ had better stay at the center of things forever after. Christ had better stay at the center of your theology or your theology is going to get unbalanced and you're going to get in trouble in, in the future. Look at, look at the end of verse 21 here. It says, just as truth is in Jesus. Where's the truth? It's in Jesus. Jesus. Now the concept of truth, that's a really big concept. Truth includes a whole lot of stuff, right? But all the biggest truths, without any question, are all centered in the same place. They all rest in the same place, in the same person of the Lord Jesus. How, how do you know? How do you know any of the big truths of life? How do you know about God? How do you know about creation? How do you know about sin and salvation and heaven and hell and eternity and life and death and all these things? If you subtract Jesus Christ from the picture, how do we know any of that? Well, we know them because they all come to rest in the Lord. Truth is in Jesus. It's all centered in the person of Christ 
Himself. Jesus is the one who says in John 14, what I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Truth is in Him. He says, nobody comes to the Father but through Me. How about this in John 8? Uh, Jesus was saying, it's, it's, I'm, I'm reading from John 8, verse 31. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed Him, so he's talking to people who are already believers, who are already saying, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. This is what he says. If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. He says, if, if, okay, you're, you're believers, that's great. Now you need to continue on. Continue in what? Continue in my word. Continue in my truth. And you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The truth is in Jesus. In other words, it's continuing on in His truth. Colossians chapter 2 and, and verse 3, it says that, that in Christ Himself, in Him are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. <laughs> Where do we get wisdom and knowledge? Where is it all centered? It's centered in the person of Christ Himself. You know, the Bible Bible has a lot of pages. It has a lot of pages. It talks about a lot of different stuff along the way. But the heart of the whole thing, the story of the whole book is one story. Isn't it? It's telling us about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's Christ in Him crucified. It's Christ as the Redeemer for humanity. He's the story of the whole Bible. And so, so we've got to keep Him in the center. We've got to keep learning Christ as, as the center of all truth. And it's, it's particularly Jesus, the historical person, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus who, who was born as a baby in Bethlehem to a, a virgin mother, Jesus who, who, who grew up in Nazareth working as a carpenter, Jesus who ministered in the dusty roads of Galilee and Judea, Jesus, who, who, who taught about God, who, who healed the sick and did so much good. Jesus, who went to the cross, crucified as a sacrifice for our sins, resurrected in victory. Those are the greatest facts of all human history. They all center around Jesus. That's the center of the whole thing, the whole story. And, and with this precious person, all truth ultimately Rest. Truth is in Jesus, uh, beloved, and and we never we never get beyond this, or we shouldn't get beyond this. The centrality of Jesus in all the truth that we learn. I, as I as I go on, you know, you guys know I, I like theology. I read I read big books with big words sometimes, and I enjoy that. Uh, but but as I go on in the Christian life, I have I have less and less enthusiasm for a kind of, of intellectual, theoretical sort of Calvinism that just gets off in the weeds and argues about minutia, but is not excited about Jesus Himself. There's, there's not, is not thrilled with the Lord of glory. That where, where nobody weeps over Christ and nobody shouts about Christ. And, and it's, just, it's just moving words around on a page. No truth is in Jesus, beloved. If if the truth you're learning doesn't make you doesn't make you love Jesus more or worship Jesus better, then it's probably not doing you much good. Truth is in Jesus. So two things. Salvation involves a learning process and that learning process is centered in Christ himself. The third thing we see here is that learning Christ should motivate us to holiness. Learning Christ should motivate you toward holiness. That is the whole point of this paragraph. That's the whole context here. It's a call to holiness. And, and so, so Paul describes how bad the, the Ephesians used to be when they were lost. So that's verses 17 through 19. And then he says, but you did not learn Christ this way. He says, he says, yeah, you guys used to be that way, but now you've learned Christ. And learning Christ is completely contrary to that old lifestyle that you used to be following. If you have learned Christ at all, he's saying, 
then you will have nothing to do with that old rotten stuff anymore. That major change has happened. Everything about Christ is, is drawing us toward holiness instead. I, I like this quote from uh, Martin Lloyd-Jones. I can kind of picture him getting excited as he, as he says this. He says, I will put it as a challenge. I defy any person to give me a single detail about the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. His coming, His living, His actions, His teaching, His dying, His rising again, His sending the Spirit, which does not inevitably and as it were automatically direct attention to holiness. And he's right. I mean, everything you think about connected with Jesus is holiness. It's purity. He's drawing us. He's calling us to be like Himself. He's giving us the perfect example of everything. And, and, and so let me ask just a really practical question. When, 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 we think about, when we think about just fighting against remaining sin in our life, when we think about resisting temptation and, and, and being strong in, against sin and, and so on, do you think about this? Do you think about this at all? Do you think about how, how meditating truth about the Lord Jesus Christ Himself gives you great power over sin and great, and great incentive toward holiness? And you realize, just like it says, that, that, that we did not learn Christ this way. We, we've, learned, we've learned a Christ who is holy and calls us to holiness. And, and the, more, the more excited we are about Jesus, the less, the less pull we feel from the temptations that come at us. Um, there's, there's real power in this. Um, we can turn this around though and apply it to somebody that's, that's not a real Christian at all. Somebody we call a false Christian, a fake Christian. Somebody that's just a Christian in name only but doesn't really know the Lord, doesn't really learn Christ. If, if a person says that they're saved, but they're still sinning like a lost person and, and making no attempt to flee from sin and pursue holiness at all, then, then the conclusion that these verses point to, the conclusion is, hey, you haven't learned Christ yet. If you've learned Christ, you wouldn't still be acting that way. That's, that's the logic here. You've not learned Christ like that. And so the conclusion is, well, then they're not saved. They've not learned Christ at all. And, and this is stated explicitly in Scripture. 1 John 2, verse 4 says, The one who says, I have come to know Him, and does not keep His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So, so you can say all the right stuff, but if you don't care about holiness, if you don't care about obeying the Lord, he says, no, you're a liar. It's not true. In contrast, though, a real Christian, a real Christian hates sin and struggles against it. I think Evangeline said that in her testimony, and that's so true. I mean, real Christians can fall short. They can fall often. They can fall really badly and shamefully. They can go through really rough stretches. They can have gigantic blind spots of, of things that they're, that they're messing up again and again. But, but the general direction of their lives is away from sin and toward righteousness. It's toward becoming like Jesus. That's what their heart desires. That's where you ought to be able to see some, see some growth, see some progress over time. The Christian is becoming more like Jesus, thinking more like Jesus, feeling more like Jesus, um, having priorities and values more like Jesus, having, having faith and beliefs more like Jesus, making decisions more like Jesus would, daily behavior that would be more like Christ. Move on to a fourth thing. The third one was, was that it motivates us to holiness when we learn Christ. The fourth thing is really amazing thought, and that is that Christ Himself is our teacher. We're talking about learning Christ, but we find out in verse 21 that Christ Himself is actually the teacher in the process of learning Christ. It says in verse 21, if indeed you have heard Him. If indeed you have heard Him. 
Now, probably none of these Ephesians had actually physically heard Jesus teaching while he was on earth. I mean, they lived pretty far away from where Jesus was. They were all lost pagans at that time. Probably none of them had ever actually seen Jesus physically or, or heard him talk. They, they'd mainly heard from Paul uh, back when Paul was evangelizing there in Ephesus. So they heard Paul preach. Now they've got their own pastors and those pastors are teaching them. So they're hearing from those guys. So then that raises the question, what does it mean when he says you've heard Christ? You've heard Christ. What's that about? Well, one explanation is that, that they had heard the gospel from Christ representatives. From Christ's representatives. So, so in that way, it was like they had heard directly from Jesus. And, and of course, that's, that, that, that makes sense. Uh, you remember last, uh, I don't know, a few weeks ago, I read that verse about, about how Christians are, are Christ ambassadors. And that when, when Christians are witnessing to lost people, Paul says it's, it's, like, it's like God was making an appeal through us. That we can, we can beg lost people in the name of God to become Christians and be reconciled to God. And, 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 so, and so, yeah, when we're preachers can be representatives of Jesus. But I don't think that's what Paul really had in mind here. I think he meant something different and something happening spiritually within people's hearts. And I think that because of all that we've studied here in Ephesians, that that's the direction Paul's thinking. Christ, you see, Christ had been speaking to these Ephesian believers all along. They had been hearing from Christ in their hearts. Um, by the Holy Spirit, Christ had been communicating with them. See, see the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. We see in the New Testament, He was sent by the Lord Jesus to Earth to take Jesus' place of ministry here on Earth. And the disciples are all sad. Jesus was going away, and He says, "No, it's better for you that I go away because then I'll send the Spirit, and you'll all have the Spirit, and then I will be with you always because you have the Spirit, and and that that, that I will dwell in your hearts that way." We talked about it earlier in Ephesians. We saw earlier here, right here in chapter four, about how how God calls us to Himself within our souls. God is is calling us at the time that we're saved. But, but that same Christ that called us to Himself, that Christ, He goes on talking to us. <laughs> he goes on speaking to us. He goes on teaching His, His people. Remember what He says in John 10, My sheep, My sheep, hear My voice. My sheep, hear My voice. And I know them and they follow me. There, you, if you're a Christian, you know the voice of Jesus, your shepherd. He's been talking to you. You've been hearing from the Lord. You know His voice in your heart. Often Jesus talked about, uh, about whether people have ears to hear or not. Right? That a person, a person could hear Jesus preach all day and not really hear anything if they didn't have spiritual ears to hear from Him. And, but that's what happens. That's what changes when you're saved. You begin to have ears to hear, to be able to receive from the Lord Jesus. And so, so I, I think Christians today, I think all of us that know the Lord, we are hearing from Christ. Christ Himself is teaching us. Every time you, you open your Bible, you, you hope to hear from Christ, don't you? You hope for Him to teach you. Um, as we meditate on the Word, we, we also hear from Christ when we, when we hear preaching. Hopefully, hopefully, if it's preaching in the power of the Spirit, we're hearing from Christ somehow. You should expect your pastor's sermons not just to present accurate Bible information, but, but to have a message for you from the Lord Himself, but you know, I think even beyond that, I think the Lord uses the whole church to to teach us His words, His message. I I hear from Christ when I hear from a whole bunch of you guys, and and when I see it in your lives, Christ is teaching me things through all of His saints. You know, it's like we spend our whole Christian life 
in the position of Mary there in, in Luke 10. You remember that story where it says Mary was seated at the Lord's feet listening to His Word. That, the Christian really feels that. That I'm, I'm, I'm receiving, I'm hearing from the Lord as I go through the Christian life. It's not just, it's not just I'm learning facts from a book or I'm hearing them from a preacher, but the Lord is teaching me things. We talk that way, right? The Lord showed me this in the Bible. And, and we know it's Him. We know it, we've heard our shepherd's voice. And it's such a blessing. So Christ Himself is the teacher. We have heard Him. And then fifthly, uh, the last thing I see here is that, that Christ is our learning environment. Christ Himself is the learning environment when we learn Christ. See, verse 21 says, you have been taught in Him. So not only are we taught by Christ, like I was just talking about, but this says, this says that, that we are taught in Christ. <laughs> We're taught in Christ. What does that mean? What does that mean? Be taught in Christ. Well, I think it's the idea that Christians are learning Christ while we're in the position of a personal spiritual union with Him. He's the head. We're the body. He's the vine. We're the branches. We've talked about this again and again as we've gone through Ephesians. We are receiving the spiritual life of Christ flowing into us all the time. That's what makes us go. That's what makes us work as Christians. We are joined to Christ. We receive His life. That is the environment. That is the context in which we learn Christ. We learn Christ as those that are actually connected to Christ already, actually joined to Him in union with Him spiritually already. Uh, some, of the, some of the commentaries, the way they describe it is they said, you learn Christ from the inside. You learn Him from the inside. It's like, I like that phrase. I think that's, that's helpful. See, see, most of the topics that we learn about most of the things we learn about are, are, are outside they're outside of us uh, so so sometimes I like to watch these these little educational videos on YouTube where guys make these videos about history subjects or whatever and and you watch that thing and you learn about something that happened in the past that's really cool and say well that's that's interesting whatever but clearly that knowledge is outside of me right that knowledge doesn't really affect my life it doesn't even matter if I remember it or not uh, a month from now. It's just kind of interesting to know. It's clearly external. But when you are learning Christ as a Christian, you're learning from the inside. You are, you're, learning, you're learning about things that directly affect you, that directly change you because you are connected to Jesus yourself. You are receiving His very spiritual life in your soul all the time. And so it's a, a very different learning process than the way we learn most things when we were, when we were in school. Um, the truths of Christ are not just interesting to know, but they, they ring true in our direct experience with the Lord Himself. And, and we find them to be our very life. There's a, there's a hymn that, that has this line. Um, it says, The love of Jesus... What it is, none but His loved ones know. The love of Jesus, what it is, none but His loved ones know. Who really knows about the love of Jesus? I mean, you could give, you give a lost person 20 Bible verses about God's love, and they still wouldn't know the love of Jesus that way. See, we know the love of Jesus personally by experience. How do you know the love of Jesus? The only people that really know it are the ones that are loved by Him, that have experienced His love. Otherwise, it's just theoretical. It's just words. But we know it from the inside, see. We, we know it as those joined to Christ Himself. And, 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 and this makes all the difference in, in just trying to communicate about spiritual things. I mean, we have to communicate out of our experience. Or we don't have much to say. And it's not helpful. We're, we're just repeating words ourselves. So... So when I, when I preach about Christ, I'm not just repeating words from big theology books in my office. See, I'm hopefully I'm telling you about somebody 
that dwells in my heart, somebody that walks with me and talks with me and tells me I am his own. You see, we, 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 we experience these things. We, we learn of Christ because Christ is, is in us and we are in Him. And He's making Himself real to us in a direct, personal way. There's a, there's a neat Bible verse about this in, in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 20. It says, And we know, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know Him who is true. So it's about, it's about how do we know that, that spiritual things are really true? He says, well, we know this. And then he goes on to say, and we are in Him who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. It's the same idea. How do we know? How do we know spiritual truth about Christ? It's because we're actually in Christ ourselves as believers. And, and we know from the inside, we know from experience that this is real. So, learning Christ. That's our theme for today. Uh, five things. We talked about how salvation involves a learning process. You're learning something. You start out as a brand new Christian learning the Gospel. You go on the rest of your life learning more and more of Christ. And it's a grand adventure. Uh, the second thing is just an emphasis that it is centered on Christ Himself. It's not, just, it's not just theology in general that you learn, but particularly it is centered on the person of Jesus. Learning Him. Knowing Him. And so for the lost person, I said be cent learn Christ. Focus on Christ if you're wanting to be, become a Christian. Just put all your, all your effort, all your faith upon the person of Jesus. For the mature Christian, same story. If you want to grow in the Lord, put all your emphasis on Christ. See how all truth connects to Christ. And, and that will help you. The third thing, the third finger we talked about is how, is how learning Christ motivates our holiness. Now that's the context of the, of the whole passage. That, that, that we've not learned Christ in the way of sin, but learned Christ in the way of righteousness. The more we know Jesus, the more we'll want to be righteous like Jesus is. Fourthly, that Christ Himself is our teacher. Uh, we're sheep hearing our shepherd's voice. He hears us and, and teaches us. Now He uses lots of people to do that, but, but ultimately it's His voice that actually helps us. And, and, and it helps us to grow in our knowledge of Him. And then the fifth is this thought that, that Christ Himself is also our learning environment. That we learn Christ from the inside because we are in Him and He is in us. So, it's like every Christian, every Christian's in school. It's in school. Some of us are done with school. Some of us have gone to a lot of school and really hoping we're done with school. Some of you guys are younger. You've got a lot of school ahead of you. But I'm telling you, if you're a Christian, you are in school. <laughs> you're in school forever. Uh, you're in this school we're talking about here. Uh, from the time where you're first saved, you, you, you're in school. And, and you're going to be in school from here on out. People sometimes call this the school of Christ. The school of Christ that we're talking about today. That's what it is. Learning Christ. The process of learning Christ. We've, we've seen it. Christ is the subject matter. Everything's, all truth is connected with Him. Christ is the teacher. Christ is the context of learning as well. Concentrate, concentrate on, on Christ. And, and if, if, if you're not a Christian, learn Christ. If you are a Christian, settle in. <laughs> Be a good student. Uh, because, because there is so much more of Christ to learn. I'm, I'm convinced we've just, we're just at the very edges of learning Christ. In the way that even, even the great saints of God have have learned Christ. All that you read biographies of people that have gotten way deeper into the reality of the Lord than we have. There's so much more ground to be taken, so much more of Christ to know and learn and 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 just make practical in our lives. So we're in school. We're all in school. We're all learning Christ if we're Christians. And thankfully, we never graduate from this school. It just keeps going on. When you when you die. You die, you just get promoted. You just get promoted to the advanced class. And 
in heaven. And you keep on, keep on learning from the Lord Jesus there. And and what a what a thrilling thought that is. Praise God that we're called to learn Him, to learn Christ like this from here on out. Amen.